good morning, everyone, and welcome to Grants Pass CSL. We see everybody else on this beautiful day. Isn't it a beautiful day? Beautiful sunrise. Here we are. We're going to start out with an opener, and I am open to my good right now. And is everybody ready? Yes.
Mass Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Steve Van Meter, your senior minister, and it's my honor and privilege to welcome you here this morning. Do you feel a little bit of that fall, coolness, vibe going on? A little, little Halloween coming up. Isn't it wonderful? I love, I love to feel the change of the seasons. But uh, thank you for being here this morning. We've been expecting you. Thank you for not disappointing us. I know you have a lot of different places you can express spiritually on a Sunday morning, but you found the place to be. This will change your life. If your religion doesn't move you, then you need to move your religion, all right? <laughs> so let's get moving. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do what we do every Sunday. Let's read our vision mission statement that's up on the screen, which says, we are an open, loving, spiritual community dedicated to evolving consciousness through teaching spiritual principles. Again, we're grateful that you've made this your Sunday destination. We have some announcements. Now, I printed some announcements that are going to be different than what you see on the screen. So, Kaylin, just roll with it. Whatever I say, just, yeah, whatever I say, just keep going. And we'll see. Should I just not do it? Uh, no, we, we'll try. We'll, we'll have some fun with it. You get to read different announcements that I'm saying. It'll keep things entertaining, you know. First off, <laughs> first off, I want to just say that our 40-day unexpected income prosperity program is in full effect right now, yeah. and we will be meeting at 12 noon today till 12:30. Um, and if though, this is a standalone class. You don't have to have gone to the first one to be at this one. Um, so if you want to join now, you're welcome to. I'll tell you that I did have to restart the 40-day <laughs> prosperity program because I skipped the second day. I was not used to doing it and woke up and went, oh man, I have to start my own program over. <laughs> this is what keeps us dedicated. And I urge you, if you get discouraged or, or you're like, I don't want to do this, just come for the class. Just come for the class. Even if you're not doing the 40-day uh program it's okay um, this is just to change your energy so um, please show up at noon we have free abundance books for you and a journal and the instructions on how to do it so if you weren't here last week please show up today and those of you that started last week please come and share your triumphs and challenges I can already say that I'm tithing $20 on unexpected income this week. It's, it's already working for me, so <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. Okay, uh, pledge drive. Speaking of money, uh, we are, our current balance is 41500 It doesn't want me to say it. $41,585 as of today. Our goal is 80000 That's our operating for the year. Uh, contribute to our welcome packs. If you have any extra Science of Mind magazines that are laying around your house that you would like to recycle, we use them for our welcome packs. And we are going to use 100 of them this Sunday, or Saturday at the uh, Enlightened Living Fair. Tree trimming. Tree trimming was done. Finally, we've been having this on our agenda for years <laughs> in, the, in the board meeting. But if you look out front, these trees right here, they've been bound together at the top because it's, it's two large stalks coming out and they're trimmed all around. Also, our beautiful Catapa, Catapa, you say, say that three times, huh? Catapa, 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 has been trimmed. Uh, one of the large branches that was hanging over the parking lot has been taken in. So, and we have wood chips in my parking spot. <laughs> so if you need some wood chips, feel free to help yourself back up your truck. Take as many as We didn't realize when we said, yeah, we'll take the wood chips that it was going to be, you know, two tons of wood chips. But please, if you need some for your garden, you know, get a trash can or whatever bag you want to use, you're welcome to take some of the wood chips. <laughs> we already have them spread throughout the universe. So... <laughs> uh, would you like to share your time, talent, and treasure with Gwen's Path Center for Spiritual Living? Um, you know, tithing is one way. Volunteering is another. Um, 
and we're doing something that would normally we would have to pay for. Um, our front door needs to be painted again. We're just waiting until all the paint falls off. It'll be really easy to paint, you know. That's a, one way of prepping your job is just letting you know, the, the elements do it for you. But we would like to expect, expedite that. So if somebody wants to paint our front door, that would be wonderful. But we have openings in the audio visual department, the bookstore, um, building maintenance, greeters, kitchen angels, spiritual gardeners. If you have a special something that you would like to contribute, please feel free. Come and see me or Jamaica, our board president, and we'll talk about it. So please help your spiritual home be in this pristine condition. A uh, request from Kay Lynn. Um, she's having surgery on the 19th, and um, she needs to fill out her dance card. And <laughs> she's got a clipboard there if you'd like to sign up to spend a little time with Kay Lynn while she recovers. She would very much appreciate it, so see her after the service. Maui Strong Fund. I think that we're at about $131, and when we get to $150, that other $150 kicks in and we'll have a full 300. So please, if you want to give to the Maui um, Disaster Relief Fund for that fire, please just indicate that on the memo line on your check, or if you're giving cash, um, put it in an envelope and write that on the outside. Oh, also, on the 40-day unexpected income, um, also indicate on the memo line <coughs> if you want that to go toward. We're just gonna count how much we get. It's not going into any different fund, it's just we want to know, add that up. Enlightened Living Fair, next Saturday, this is the last time we get to tell you about this. Enlightened Living Fair uh, it starts at 10 a.m. and goes till 5 p.m. Um, and we're looking for volunteers to help staff that booth. If you would like to help us just sit at the booth and hand out welcome packets, that would be great. I will be there the whole time um, doing spiritual mind treatment with people who want prayer. And our practitioners will be gifting that service also. But um, if you'd like to come talk about how much you enjoy your center and invite people here, that would be great. Uh, Kids Craft Play Shop, uh, Decorate Your Pumpkin, Sunday, October 15th from 12.30 to 1.30. Let's have some fun and get creative. Bring your kids or your grandkids for a crafty play shop. We will be decorating many foam pumpkins for the fall holiday. I believe that's going to be in the LEC, but I'm not sure yet. LEC, okay, great. Activities meeting will be Sunday, October 22nd at 1230. Please join us um, for our activities meeting in the LEC. Uh, we'll be focusing on November and December activities. You know, we're going to deck the halls. Uh, I think there's a holiday, or a, I think there's a, Halloween thing happening? I think there's a Halloween thing happening, so stay tuned. Uh, Michael Mandrell concert, Sunday, November 5th. Um, he's that beautiful guitar player that um, I heard at Asilomar this year. Well, I've known him for years. I actually played at Asilomar 20 years ago with him. Uh, they needed a bass player, so I sat in with him and Anton. But he's going to be doing a concert. He's going to play the Sunday service, November 5th, and then do a concert afterwards and um, some of the proceeds are gonna go as a fund, fundraiser for us. So please come and share that with us. Ongoing events is the Metaphysical Book Study, which is nine to 9.45 in the LEC building. And we are um, working on the Science of Mind textbook. I think we're at page 30 or something like that. So stay tuned for that. Uh, meditation group is from nine uh, 50 to 10.05, please come join the practitioners. Um, there's a donation drive for the Women's Crisis Center. Um, there's stuff on the back table corner there, and there's a list of stuff that they need for women in, that are experiencing challenges. Uh, also, Karen Tate, who is one of, she's not here today, but she is uh, one of our uh, she's members. On Zoom. She's on Zoom. Oh, she's on Zoom. Hi, Karen. Uh, we wanted to let everybody know that Karen, um, you may not know this about her, but she is quite the goddess. And um, she has a slideshow 
uh, coming up on uh, Saturday, October 21st, um, at 1 to 3.30 at the Serpent uh, Serendipity Healing Arts Center. It's just a couple blocks from here, and it's really cool, and check that out. She's also doing a writing adventure with Karen Tate, uh, renewing our earliest sacred stories on October 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, please look on our, we're going to post these on the wall over here, and also we're going to put links in our website so that you can find them there. But we like to promote our people who are doing stuff. I know that Deborah does all sorts of stuff, and we love to promote her. She's one of our, another one of our diamonds that we have. All of, all of you are diamonds, but she seems to shine. She seems to get herself out there and shine constantly. She's always got something going on. She has a wonderful class that's happening right now, too. What, what day is that? That's Thursdays. Thursdays? Yes. Can people still come in and sit in, or is they it clean? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they're just look on our website. There's all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, but right now, we are going to stand as Dave leads us in singing, We Are One. <laughs>
And each Sunday after the service, we're available for a short prayer treatment. And if you're available today in our practitioner, please raise your hand. Jamaica and Paula, thank you so much. Um, and our table practitioner is Jamaica Wallace. And she will be holding the high watch for us, which is just feeling the love and light of God through this room and all around and on Zoom uh, for us. And also she can lead you to a practitioner if she can't pray for you for herself. Um, so use us, we love to pray with and for you. And there's also a form on grantspasscsl.org that you can fill out. Lots of opportunities. The flowers are from Trina and her husband. Thank you so much. They're beautiful. <laughs> and are there people that are here for the very first time? We have a welcome packet for you. Welcome. We just need one. We're, sure. we're, okay. in, we're in unit. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're here. Bless Thank you. And we always have snacks and refreshments um, over there. If you want to stay afterwards and get to know us better, we would welcome that. We also have a potluck the first Sunday of every month, but this is the first Sunday. <laughs> um, remember to turn your cell phones off or silence them if you haven't already, please. And let's, let's read the prayer together. So no, no, no. Knowing that attachment causes suffering, I let go of insisting that I know what's right and give myself permission to be flowing and open, and so it is. Please remain seated and we'll sing I Am Love together. <laughs> So it's really stressful, and I'm going for some woo-woo um, <laughs> healing work next week to release trauma. And Ella gets to go with me, my little dog, which is pretty special. But it just seems like everybody's helping me find all the right stuff to do, and I'm going to get a chiropractic treatment, even though I barely have any pain at all. Everyone suggests to do that so that I don't have over, you know, things come up later. So I just want to share that. I'm very, very grateful to be here. I always say to everyone, well, you're okay. Oh, my car was totaled. <laughs> I always say, you're okay, though. That's the important part. Of it. So that's the truth here as well. So the um, what we're studying, the theme at all the CSLs is about paradox this um, month. It's playing with paradox today. And so I want to read a passage that you guys probably already know. Some of you have heard by Rumi, the 13th century poet, translated by Coleman Barker. And then we'll, I'm going to read a little bit, and then we'll go into meditation. And then I'll bring you out when it's time. Out beyond, it's hard to see up here. <laughs> Sorry. 
Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. As we investigate paradox together in October, this passage speaks to that idea for me. There is a place within me, within all of us, where it doesn't matter so much various opinions. We can meet in the field of serenity and harmony. Everything is not black and white. How grateful I am for the multitude of shades of gray in life. If every person could loosen their stubborn stances of beliefs and honor all viewpoints, even when divergent from beliefs we hold, peace could prevail. We could find much more easily a world that works for everyone by finding common ground. Whenever I read Rumi's words, peace prevails in my heart and soul, and I'm reminded of this. So in our meditation this morning, let's meet each other there in the field beyond wrongdoing and rightdoing, and feel that peace that is truly there within each of us. When you're ready, please come back into this room and open your eyes and stretch. And I know absolutely that this Grants Path Center for Spiritual Living is guided, protected, and cared for by spirit. And that is spirit within each of us and all around us. I know that there is peace and harmony and love and joy shared in this community. And I'm so grateful for this community. Thank you, God. And so it is. And now it's time for special music by Dane and then Reverend Stephen's amazing talk. Thank you. see yourself in them. Isn't that something? <laughs> Try sometime. You, see, you can say joy. And they they feel your joy. You feel your joy coming back to you. How about that? Now that's two for the price of one. <laughs>
Take a little love and pass it on. Take a little love and pass it on. And before you know it, the world will start to show it if you take a little love and pass it on. Joy! Well, here we are, October 8th, 2023, and our October theme is playing with paradox. It's funny, you know, uh, I'm a Libra, and, you know, paradox is the scale, you know, being right in the middle, and that's just my term on it. But today is getting comfortable with discomfort. I was thinking about this, you know. As we become more comfortable with discomfort, it's not a discomfort. It's an invitation for higher consciousness. And if we can not be so disappointed, you know, life disappoints us sometimes. But if we can get through the disappointment and ask the challenge, what is your gift? What are you trying to tell me through this discomfort? We can learn something from it and not get stuck in the discomfort. You know, um, dis-ease is getting stuck in a discomfort. We need to move through it, ask it, what is your gift? Because every challenge has a gift. Ernest Holmes wrote The Science of Mind. This is back August 1971 on page 16 of the Science of Mind magazine. And let us not forget the importance of keeping our minds in a state of good nature Flexibility. Are you flexible? Yes, and we must be flexible and tolerant as well as positive and affirmative. Again, that's from the Science of Mind magazine back in 71. And in uh, Ernest Holmes' book, This Thing Called You, on page 30, keep the doorway of your mind open, feeling, thinking, communing with this life. Know that it fills you with light and with power. And from also this thing called you, two pages later, on page 32, there is a perfect coordination in every part of my being because the spirit of perfection is acting in and through me. Wow, you're perfect in your imperfection. You know, you, you might go, well, I'm, I'm not perfect, but there's some things that I do that are perfect. So what's the rub? What's, what is the difference here? Do you find yourself attached to certain beliefs, ideas, and perspectives? 
<laughs> Expectations are premeditated resentments. Mm. Ooh, whoopsie, ouch. Is there a wrong way and a right way of doing things? You know, there's just different ways. You know, you may train somebody how to do something and they may not do it the same way and you say they're doing it wrong, but if the outcome is the same, who cares how they got there? That's their way. Don't let it be your way or the highway. Let the highway be whatever way that happens to be. Are you open to that? What if there was a third way? A, just a way. Not wrong or right, just a different way. Another way of thinking that brought unlimited benefits and an expanded way of thinking. And the good news is that there is. There's always a way. We just have to find that way. You know, we get stuck in life. We get tripped up by our beliefs and our feelings about things. But can you walk a mile in someone else's moccasins? Can you understand that their way is not a wrong way, it's just their way? It may not be my way, but don't be attached to your way being the only way. Jim Collins wrote in B, Beyond Entrepreneurship 2.0, Builders of greatness are comfortable with paradox. They don't oppress themselves with the tyranny of the or, which pushes people to believe that things must be A or B, but not both. Instead, they liberate themselves with the genius of the and. And we can do it this way thought about that. That opens up a whole new avenue within my consciousness. So this month we're expanding our ability to live out loud in the area of, of in every area of our life through a playful exploration of the paradox. Paradoxes are a natural part of life. The more that we can embrace this truth, the more we can find solution to the major challenges we're facing in our individual lives, our communities, and the world. As we continue to play with the paradox, here's, here's my funny, here's your paradox. <laughs> and as we play with these paradox, it is imperative that we look at the polarities that exist in our lives. Attachment to one perspective or another often causes stress and sometimes suffering. But can we learn to be willing to remain open to understand alternative perspectives and then find a third way? Is there a different way? Or is your way the only way? <laughs> we know where that gets us. The highway. A way that encompasses the positive benefits of all aspects of the seeming polarity. You know, our, our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, was very clear that we are spiritual beings living a human experience. Yet so often we get caught up seeing things from only one perspective. And we miss what that means. What is the spiritual perspective of our situation? What if we were to Take a, I call it a 3,000 foot view of our situation. If we were just on the edge of space looking down at our world and you couldn't even see you on, on the thumbnail, it kind of reduces your challenges. And this isn't to make light of your challenges. It's just to see things in perspective. I heard something today about what, what, the year 2021-23 is going to look like. 21-23. 21-23. Everything that you own will be passed on to someone else. Your car will be reduced to scrap. The home you live in will be lived in by someone else who's hanging their pictures on their wall. And the things that you're dealing with right now 
you won't even remember because you will have got the experience that it came to understand with you. And you will have taken that knowledge into your next plane of existence. Do you believe in that sort of thing? Is it fade to black? Or is there an afterlife? Or is it fade to black and then an afterlife, or an afterlife and then the fade? I don't know. That's up to you to figure out. A way that encompasses the positive beliefs of all aspects of seeming polarity. Again, our founder, Ernest Holmes, was very clear that we need to focus on love. We're living a spiritual life as human beings, and we're living a human life as spiritual beings. It's happening simultaneously. Have we become so spiritual that we're no earthly good? If we are overly focused on our oneness, we may be missing the smaller picture. And if we're overly focused on the big picture, we lose the smaller one. We may miss opportunities to reach out with love and support for one another, because it's all spiritual. We need to embrace both sides and be okay with someone else's point of view. Can you be okay with somebody else's point of view? Even though I know that you're the right point of view. <coughs> of course, of course, you're right. <laughs> this is where embracing our paradox comes in. If we get so caught up in the suffering and challenges of, the, of living in this world and we forget our divinity, then we're missing out on the joy of being an infinite and eternal being. We are so much more than we physically look like here. We're only experiencing that much. We've dipped our finger into that much of being a human being. The rest of us is the spiritual being observing what we're doing on this plane of existence. But we've agreed to forget the other part of us while we're in this little experience that we're having. Often we stand on one side of the polarity or the other. Our language, our way of moving through the world, the questions we ask one another, and the ways that we seek meaning in our lives all lend themselves to standing on one side of a polarity or the other. So let's ask some personal questions here. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready to, to delve into this now? Don't answer these questions out loud. Or not. <laughs> these are mind questions, <laughs> blurting out what you are and what somebody else is. Are you a morning person or a night owl? Coffee or tea or both? Okay. Are you a Democrat, Crat, or a Republican? Don't answer that. <laughs> or are you an interdependent thinker? Hmm. I'm an interdependent thinker. I like that, Marty. <laughs> I don't have to disclose. That's parking, what I call parking lot talk. The only, as political as we get in here, is I say vote. Vote for something. But, Ask your higher self <laughs> before you pull that lever. Do you like dogs or cats? Or both? Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Male or female? Our entire society is based on picking a side. Even when you don't fit into one side or the other. Are there times that you feel like you don't fit in? Well, make your own room. Make your own place to fit in. You know, if somebody writes you a pink slip, write your own green slip somewhere else. You know, God bless them if they don't understand you. It's just part of your natural progression. Once we have chosen a side, whether it is a preference or a belief system or a way of thinking or a call to action, we then begin to see only the benefits of our side and only the defects of the other side. We can only see this, uh, we can see this in, in every major debate our worldview is holding right now. 
It's like, are you this or are you that? But we're not. We are everything. Because there's truly only one of us here. Source energy. God. Christ consciousness. Acting as the countless expressions that we all are. And we all have to have different perspectives. If we all thought the same, how bland would that be? But when we force ourselves or, or, or are fo forced into one side of a polarity, we begin to experience the effects of the overuse of that polarity. And it just happens. We get, we get sucked into it, right? You get sucked into it. Well, this is the right way. This is the only right way. And anybody that doesn't think this way, they're wrong. It can be a fairly easy to shift back and forth between the polarities if we're open to that. We have little to lose if we can just open our mind a little bit more to say, you know, I may not agree with you, but I hear you. And I understand your perspective. It's just not mine. And that's okay. For example, preferring cats over dogs. But what happens when we find a dog that we love? Do we throw the cats out? <laughs> no, we open our heart to be animal lovers, right? There's people that are cat people and dog people. Or animal people. However, this becomes more challenging where there's something to lose. But I have a dog. That dog lives with me. I have a different experience of dogs. I see cats roaming everywhere. Do they live anywhere? <laughs> when it comes to, I know, in this yard you'll see lots of cats. When it comes to something in which we have invested a lot of our time, money, and energy, it becomes much harder to shift our perspective. Attachment. Expectations. Premeditated resentments. Ouch! How can you not expect something, though? But are we flexible in our expectation? If we ask the universe to give us something and we get something else, do we not even see it because it's not exactly what we want? Additionally, it becomes nearly impossible when we discover that something we identify with is no longer working for us. You know what happens when the belief that you held, you no longer believe? And you're like, how long did I think that was the truth? <laughs> How long, I'll give you an example of this for myself, I'm calling myself on this, and you probably, I've said this before, so stop me if you've heard it. No, don't hurt <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was uh, given this idea of peace of mind. Well, peace of mind. And you know that peace of mind means that you are peaceful within your own mind. But when I first heard it, my dyslexia, my dyslexia, it's mine. Yeah. I sometimes feel the effects of a dyslexic point of view. <laughs> that I thought it was a piece, like a little part of your mind. And I was thinking, how many little parts of mind are there for everyone to have a piece of it? You know, it's your piece of mind. And how could I grow my little piece of mind to be bigger so I could know more? And someone's uh, practitioner said, no, they mean peace, like, you know, peaceful, like, calm peace. I'm like, oh, oh <laughs> wow, quantum moment. Right. <laughs> I shifted everything in my consciousness because I saw things differently in that moment. But this happens. It's called a false premise. See, we've been given premises of something in our life that was false, but we're living under the uh, thinking that it's true. And we live under that when we have not confirmed what the truth is. So I'll give you an example of that. Let's say that we all looked outside and the street was wet. And we, under a false premise, thought that it had rained. 
So we all put our jackets on. When actually a truck had come down the street with water spilling off it and wet the street. But we've been living our lives with these rain jackets on, thinking that it's going to rain when some water just dumped on the street. Somebody may have done something in your life that you thought was one way, and it really wasn't that way. I told you my baked bean story, but I'll tell it once again. It was such a great one. My, my roommate, I had baked beans, and I went to the store and put them on the shelf, and um, I went to look for them the next day, and they weren't there. And I knew that my roommate had eaten my baked beans. <laughs> and I was very upset. Because that's something you don't do, is eat someone else's food in a shared kitchen relationship. The Pop-Tarts are mine. I put my name on it, it's on that shelf that's mine. <laughs> and so I was treating them as if they had stolen and eaten my baked beans. I was not very nice, but I couldn't, like, bring myself to say, you eat my baked beans. <laughs> we do this in life all the time. We think something happened when that didn't happen, the way we thought. We run with that premise. Well, a couple weeks later, I was rearranging something on the shelf, and there were my baked beans. They had gotten pushed to the back. I had some amends to do that day. I had, to, I had to rethink some things about my roommate and my baked beans. But what this is, is sometimes in life we see something happen. And we think something that is completely misinformed. And we live that way. And later we find, we hopefully we find out at some point that that's not what happened and we can change our tune. We need to be open that what if that's not what happened? What if somebody did something because of their own inner hurting and they were lashing out, not at you, but because something else was bothering them? Don't take it so personally. You know what? We're here for each other. Let's be kind, as kind as we can. This can be seen in our political views on immigration, abortion, spiritual beliefs, afterlife, or do we just fade to black? Religion, cultural views, etc. Often, rather than opening to the vulnerability of being wrong, ouch, self assessing and changing our views, we double down on our side of the polarity. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take my heels in on this one. And then you're dragged by your heels across <laughs> the experience. <clears throat> we overly focus on the beliefs of our side, even if we are no longer experiencing those beliefs, and push away the other side, citing its overuses and problems, even as we long for the benefits that it brings. <clears throat> Rather than forcing ourselves into a single side of a polarity or swinging back and forth between the two sides of a polarity, as we experience our overuses of one side and long for the benefits of the other, we must learn to find another way, a third way, that it's all good, that it may not be good, but it's all what it is. It's happening for a reason. It may not be your reason. It's something for your tool belt. If you can use it, take it with you. If you can't, leave it for someone else. But don't be, don't be so firm in our belief that we are not open at the top. This requires the vulnerability of looking at what is no longer working and seeing the beliefs of the side from which we have pushed away. You know, if somebody, if I have an idea and somebody says, that's a bad idea, I want to know why they think it's a bad idea. If I just say, nope, it's a good idea, I don't want blah, 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 blah. <laughs> maybe they're holding the key that will change my consciousness. This is why we need to listen to all perspectives. We don't have to agree with them initially, but what if they hold the key? What if they have your gift and you're not taking it because you don't believe that it's for you? 
It can be challenging to change our belief systems, our labels, our ideas, and even our identity to find a middle ground that utilizes the benefits of both sides of the polarity without suffering from its overuse. As we become more flexible and more open to different perspectives, we raise in consciousness. You know, when we're, when we're at conflict, it's really the universe saying, I'm calling you up. I'm calling you forward. And our angst is us saying, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I'm good where I am. Leave me alone. And the universe <coughs> does what it does, is it circles and cycles. And it comes around again. Same song, different verse. A little bit louder and a little bit worse. Because if it didn't get your attention, with angel wings, it will use a two by four. <laughs> That's why they call that thing on the sailing ship a boom. It's not because that's the name of it. That's the sound when it hits your head. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> For example, most people would label themselves as either an introvert or an extrovert. Yet, even the greatest introverts need time with people, whether that's in public setting or small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. And even the most outgoing of extroverts need some time alone. You know, this COVID experience that we went through where we all had to isolate really revealed some of our inability to be alone or be with people. And as we're coming out of this, we're, we're, we're a little awkward, you know, every, like everybody wants to travel now, right? <laughs> and everybody wants to, to go camping or, you know, it's, it's just what we do. We've lost some of our social skills, but I hope that in our reinventing them that we become more and more loving, a little kinder to each other, a little, a little gentler with ourselves and everybody else, and not to overthink things. You know, we've all lost friendships because of our perspective and our polarities, maybe even family members because of our situations. And only spending time with people can result with the opposite of overthinking things. We need time for self-care. When we feel drained, admit it and take care of ourselves. We have to navigate and discover the amount of time that we do use in our spiritual work and even out the polarity. You know, we have a lot to offer to life, and a lot is being offered, but we have to be open and receptive to it. This thing's going on and on. But we have to be open and receptive, or we're going to miss it. So don't miss it. Don't. I don't want to be laying in some hospital going, I wish I would have loved a little bit more. I want to love right now. I want to be open to love. So in conclusion, as we continue to play with the paradoxes and the polarities that come up in our lives, it's important that we <coughs> hold on loosely. It's a 38 special song. <laughs> hold on loosely. <laughs> this is how we get comfortable in our discomfort. We become okay with us not knowing <coughs> the answer. You're not going to know all the answers. You're just not. It's just not time for it to be revealed to you. So stop trying to figure it all out and just start living and loving and being okay with it. You know, it's okay not to know it all. It's okay to admit you were wrong. Oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we look at the areas of our life where we're holding on too tightly to one polarity villainizing the other and see if there's a third way that we can be both or at least be okay with someone else's perspective. Third way thinking can be implemented in our lives individually and collectively to find solution to the biggest challenges that the world is facing. To create a world 
that works for everyone. And so it is. So it is. us to move in and remember who we are. So I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you or take a soft focus on the candles or the flowers and let's just remember who we are together. So bringing to the forefront of your consciousness what you call the creative energy of the universe. It's your choice of what you call it. It's your experience and it gets to be what you want it to be. But I think we can agree that each one of us is a divine emanation of the awesome power and its ability to create. And here we find ourselves. So as we turn away from the challenges of life, not to deny them, but not to give them any more power. We literally turn into the harmony of life, knowing that we are not left or right, but we are always center. And we are centered when we remove our mind from the polarity and consider the healing that's happening. Each one of us is healing right now. All the cells in your body are going to the perfect place for the divine healing to happen. And the things that are happening in the world of our lives are bringing about the situations for our highest and best good. That's why we're here. It may not look like it at the time, but what People mean for challenge, the infinite means for good. It's all in our perspective. So as we move our perspective into the healing modality, we begin to thrive in the consciousness of yes. In the consciousness of there is a way. And I am open to that way being revealed to me in a way that I can identify and act upon. Connections are being made. And healing is happening right here and right now. As we release our grip on situations, maybe a loved one who's made their transition, or a situation that no longer serves you in your life, just letting go, thanking that energy for its time and its message and it's healing. We are returned to love. So it is easy to be grateful for that love. Thank you, divine, loving spirit, Christ consciousness, source energy, great spirit for loving each one of us so much that it has given the ultimate gift of life and allowed us to live it fully in this present moment. It is easy to let go, completely releasing back into the infinite any challenge that may have been obstructing our total view. And within that becomes a new energetic of peace and harmony. We let go and we let God be God in our lives in a way that allow us to prosper and thrive wholly. As we affirm this together by saying, Amen. So it is. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Okay, it's time for our affirmatory ideas about sharing. So if you'd like to take your, your gift in your hand and put it on your heart, or just your hand on your heart, let's recite this together. And the divine consciousness that I am is forever expressing its true nature of abundance. With an open heart, I give this abundance to the GBCSL, and so it is. Music. Maestro. <laughs>
to say a prayer for the offertory this morning. From the love of pure spiritual energy, these tithes and gifts have been collected. They are evidence of our faith, our belief, and our ability to manifest in this world of form. They do good work in this world, blessing the giver and the receiver, which allows this, the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living, to be open and available to those who are choosing to remember who they are and even those who may not know it yet. And for this, this community thrives. All are blessed. And so it is. Okay, it's time for our closing song. Dave, take your word.